For the majority of Christian denominations, the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost is the third person hypostasis of the Trinity, the triune God manifested as God the Father, God the Son, and the God the Holy Spirit, each person itself being God. Some Christian theologians identify the Holy Spirit with the Ruach HaKodesh in Jewish scripture, and with many similar names including the Ruach Elohim Spirit of God, Ruach Yhwh Spirit of Yahweh, and the Ruach Hakma Spirit of Wisdom. In the New Testament it is identified with the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of Truth, the Paraclete and the Holy Spirit. The New Testament details a close relationship between the Holy Spirit and Jesus during his earthly life and ministry. The Gospels of Matthew and Luke and the Nicene Creed state that Jesus was "...conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary." The Holy Spirit descended on Jesus like a dove during his baptism, and in his farewell discourse after the Last Supper Jesus promised to send the Holy Spirit to his disciples after his departure, the Holy Spirit is referred to as the Lord, the Giver of Life, in the Nicene Creed, which summarizes several key beliefs held by many Christian denominations. The participation of the Holy Spirit in the tripartite nature of conversion is apparent in Jesus' final post-resurrection instruction to his disciples at the end of the Gospel of Matthew 28-19, "...make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit," and, "...for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them." Since the first century, Christians have also called upon God with the Trinitarian formula. Father, Son and Holy Spirit", in prayer, absolution and benediction. In the Book of the Acts of the Apostles the arrival of the Holy Spirit, happens fifty days after the resurrection of the Christ, and is currently celebrated in Christendom with the Feast of Pentecost. In Christian theology, pneumatology refers to the study of the Holy Spirit. Etymology <inaudible> <inaudible> and usage the coin Greek word pneuma, pneuma pneuma is found around 385 times in the New Testament, with some scholars differing by three to nine occurrences. Pneuma appears 105 times in the four canonical Gospels, 69 times in the Acts of the Apostles, 161 times in the Pauline Epistles, and 50 times elsewhere. These usages vary, in 133 cases, it refers to spirit in a general sense and in 153 cases to spiritual around 93 times the reference to the holy spirit sometimes under the name numa and sometimes explicitly as the numa to hagion numa to hagion in a few cases it is also simply used generically to mean wind or life it was generally translated into the vulgate as spiritus and spiritus sanctus the english terms holy ghost and holy spirit are complete synonyms one derives from the old english gast and the other from the latin loanword spiritus like pneuma, they both refer to the breath, to its animating power, and to the soul. The Old English term is shared by all other Germanic languages compare, e.g., the German Geist and is older, but the King James Bible used both interchangeably, and 20th century translations of the Bible overwhelmingly prefer Holy Spirit, probably because the general English term ghost has increasingly come to refer only to the spirit of a dead person. Topic Names Topic Topic Jewish Scriptures, Old Testament Topic Source Wirwa Kadeswa Rua Kadeso, Holy Spirit, Isaiah chapter sixty three, verse ten Wirwa Kadesika Rua Kadseka, Holy Spirit, Psalms fifty one to eleven Ruwa Elohim Ruwa Elohim Spirit of God Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 Nisamater wa Hayam Nismat Ruwa Hayam The Breath of the Spirit of Life Genesis chapter 7 verse 22 Ruwa Yewa Ruwa YHWH Spirit of YHWH Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 Ruwa Hakima Wabina Ruach Hakma Yubina Spirit of Wisdom Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 Ruwa as a Gebra Rua Esah Yugabura Spirit of Counsel and Might Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 Ruwa dot Wayarit Yewa Rua dot Wayarat Yhwh Spirit of Understanding and Fear of Yhwh Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2 Topic New Testament 
Topic Numatos Hagio Numatos Hagio Holy Spirit Mount 1 18 Numati Theo Numati Theo Spirit of God Mount 12 28 Ho Paracletos Ho Paracletos The Intercessor JN 16 7 Numa Tes Alidias Numa Tes Alidias Spirit of Truth JN 16 13 Numa Christau Numa Christau Spirit of Christ 1 PT 11 Depending on context Numa Numa Spirit JN 3 8 Numatos Numatos Spirit JN 3 8 Topic Biblical portrayal Topic Topic Old Testament Topic What the Hebrew Bible calls Spirit of God and Spirit of Elohim is called in the Talmud and Midrash, Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKadosh. Although the expression, Holy Spirit, occurs in Ps. 51 11 and in Isa. 63 10 11, it had not yet acquired quite the same meaning which was attached to it in rabbinical literature, in the latter, it is equivalent to the expression, Spirit of the Lord. In Gen. 1 2, God's Spirit hovered over the form of lifeless matter, thereby making the creation possible. Although the Ruach HaKadosh may be named instead of God, it was conceived of as being something distinct, and, like everything earthly that comes from heaven, the Ruach HaKadosh is composed of light and fire. The most characteristic sign of the presence of the Ruach HaKadosh is the gift of prophecy. The use of the word, Ruach, Hebrew, breath, or wind, in the phrase Ruach HaKadosh seems to suggest that Judaic authorities believed the Holy Spirit was a kind of communication medium like the wind. The Spirit talks sometimes with a masculine and sometimes with a feminine voice. The word Ruach is both masculine and feminine. Topic. New Testament Topic. The term Holy Spirit appears at least 90 times in the New Testament. The sacredness of the Holy Spirit to Christians is affirmed in all three synoptic gospels: Matthew chapter 12 verses 30 to 32, Mark chapter 3 verses 28 to 30, and Luke chapter 12 verses 8 to 10, which proclaim that blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is the unforgivable sin. The participation of the Holy Spirit in the Trinity is suggested in Jesus' final post-resurrection instruction to his disciples at the end of the Gospel of Matthew 28 to 19. Go ye therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Synoptic Gospels The Holy Spirit is mentioned by all three authors of the Synoptic Gospels. Most of the references are by the author of the Gospel of Luke, this emphasis is continued by the same author in the Book of Acts. The Holy Spirit does not simply appear for the first time at Pentecost after the resurrection of Jesus, but is present in the Gospel of Luke in 1 prior to the birth of Jesus. In Luke chapter 1 verse 15, John the Baptist was said to be filled with the Holy Spirit prior to birth, and the Holy Spirit came upon the Virgin Mary in Luke chapter 1 verse 35. In Luke chapter 3 verse 16 John the Baptist stated that Jesus baptized not with water but with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus during his baptism in the Jordan River. In Luke chapter 11 verse 13 Jesus provided assurances that God the Father would give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. Mark chapter 13 verse 11 specifically refers to the power of the Holy Spirit to act and speak through the disciples of Jesus in time of need. Be not anxious beforehand what ye shall speak, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 10 verse 20 refers to the same act of speaking through the disciples, but uses the term, Spirit of your Father. The sacredness of the Holy Spirit to Christians is affirmed in all three synoptic gospels: Matthew chapter 12 verses 30 to 32, Mark chapter 3 verses 28 to 30, and Luke chapter 12 verses 8 to 10, which proclaim that blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is the unforgivable sin. Topic: Luke Acts. Topic: 
Together, Luke Acts contain over half of the references in the New Testament to the Holy Spirit although this author wrote approximately 25% of the content of the New Testament. Topic. Acts of the Apostles Topic. The Acts of the Apostles has sometimes been called the Book of the Holy Spirit or the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Of the 70 or so occurrences of the word pneuma in Acts, 55 refer to the Holy Spirit. From the start, in Acts chapter 1 verse 2, the reader is reminded that the ministry of Jesus, while he was on earth, was carried out through the power of the Holy Spirit and that the Acts of the Apostles continue the Acts of Jesus and are also facilitated by the Holy Spirit. Acts presents the Holy Spirit as the life principle of the early church and provides five separate and dramatic instances of its outpouring on believers in 221 4:28-31, 815-17, and 19-6. References to the Holy Spirit appear throughout Acts, for example Acts chapter 1 verse 5 and 8 stating towards the beginning, For John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Ye shall receive power, when the Holy Spirit is come upon you. Referring to the fulfillment of the prophecy of John the Baptist in Luke chapter 3 verse 16, He shall baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Topic. Johannine literature Topic. Three separate terms, namely Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth and Paraclete are used in the Johannine writings. The Spirit of Truth is used in John chapter 14 verse 17, 1526 and 1613. The first epistle of John then contrasts this with the Spirit of Error. In 1 John chapter 4 verse 6, 1 John chapter 4 verses 1 to 6 provides the separation between spirits that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh as of God, and those who in error refuse it, an indication of their being evil spirits. In John chapter 14 verse 26, Jesus states, "But the Comforter, even the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things." The identity of the Comforter has been the subject of debate among theologians, who have proposed multiple theories on the matter. Topic. Pauline epistles Topic. The Holy Spirit plays a key role in the Pauline epistles, and the Apostle Paul S. pneumatology is closely connected to his theology and Christology, to the point of being almost inseparable from them. The first epistle to the Thessalonians, which was likely the first of Paul's letters, introduces a characterization of the Holy Spirit in 1 to 6 and 4 to 8, which is found throughout his epistles. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6, Paul refers to the imitation of Christ and himself and states. And ye became imitators of us, and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Spirit, whose source is identified in 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 8 as, God, who giveth his Holy Spirit unto you. These two themes of receiving the Spirit, like Christ, and God being the source of the Spirit persist in Pauline letters as the characterization of the relationship of Christians with God. For Paul the imitation of Christ involves readiness to be shaped by the Holy Spirit, as in Romans chapter 8 verse 4 and 8 11. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwelleth in you, he that raised up Christ Jesus from the dead shall give life also to your mortal bodies through his Spirit that dwelleth in you. The first epistle to the Thessalonians also refers to the power of the Holy Spirit in 1-5, a theme also found in other Pauline letters. Topic. Jesus and the Holy Spirit Topic. The New Testament details a close relationship between the Holy Spirit and Jesus during his earthly life and ministry. The Apostles' Creed echoes the statements in the Gospels of Luke and Matthew, stating that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of Mary. Specific New Testament references to the interaction of Jesus and the Holy Spirit during his earthly life, and the enabling power of the Holy Spirit during his ministry include Spirit without measure, having been given to Jesus in John chapter 3 verse 34, referring to the word spoken by Jesus rima, being the words of God. 
Baptism of Jesus, with the Holy Spirit descending on him as a dove in Matthew chapter 3 verses 13 to 17, Mark chapter 1 verses 9 to 11 and Luke chapter 3 verses 21 to 23. Temptation of Jesus, in Matthew chapter 4 verse 1 the Holy Spirit led Jesus to the desert to be tempted. The Spirit casting out demons Matthew chapter 12 verse 28, in exorcising the blind and mute man miracle. Rejoice the Spirit in Luke chapter 10 verse 21 where 70 disciples are sent out by Jesus. Acts chapter 1 verse 2 states that until his death and resurrection, Jesus had given commandment through the Holy Spirit unto the apostles. Referring to the sacrifice of Jesus to be crucified out of obedience to the Father, Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 states that Jesus, through the eternal Spirit offered himself without blemish unto God. In his farewell discourse to his disciples, Jesus promised that he would send the Holy Spirit to them after his departure, in John chapter 15 verse 26 stating, Whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth shall bear witness of me. Topic. Mainstream doctrines Topic. The theology of spirits is called pneumatology. The Holy Spirit is referred to as the Lord and Giver of Life in the Nicene Creed. He is the Creator Spirit, present before the creation of the universe and through His power everything was made in Jesus Christ, by God the Father. Christian hymns such as Veni Creator Spiritus reflects this belief. In early Christianity, the concept of salvation was closely related to the invocation of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And since the first century, Christians have called upon God with the name Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in prayer, baptism, communion, exorcism, hymn singing, preaching, confession, absolution, and benediction. This is reflected in the saying. Before there was a doctrine of the Trinity, Christian prayer invoked the Holy Trinity. For the majority of Christian denominations, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Holy Trinity Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and is Almighty God. The Holy Spirit is understood to be one of the three persons of the Trinity. As such, He is personal and also fully God, co equal and co eternal with God the Father and Son of God. He is different from the Father and the Son in that He proceeds from the Father and, according to Roman Catholics, Old Catholics, Anglicans, and Protestants, from the Father and the Son as described in the Nicene Creed. The triune God is thus manifested as three persons Greek hypostases, in one divine being Greek, Usha, called the Godhead from Old English, Godhood, the divine essence of God. In the New Testament, by the power of the Holy Spirit Jesus was conceived in the womb of the Virgin Mary, while maintaining her virginity. The Holy Spirit descended over Jesus in a corporeal way, as a dove, at the time of his baptism, and a voice from heaven was heard, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. He is the sanctifier of souls, the helper, comforter, the giver of graces, he who leads souls to the Father and the Son. The Holy Spirit is credited with inspiring believers and allowing for them to interpret all the sacred scripture and leads prophets, both in Old Testament and New Testament. Christians receive the fruits of the Holy Spirit by means of His mercy and grace. God the Holy Spirit The belief in the Holy Trinity among many Christians includes the concept of God the Holy Spirit, along with God the Son and God the Father. Theologian Vladimir Lasky has argued that while in the act of the Incarnation, God the Son became manifest as the Son of God, the same did not take place for God the Holy Spirit which remained unrevealed. Yet, as in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19 God the Spirit continues to dwell in bodies of the faithful. In Christian theology the Holy Spirit is believed to perform specific divine functions in the life of the Christian or the Church. The action of the Holy Spirit is seen as an essential part of the bringing of the person to the Christian faith. The new believer is born again of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit enables Christian life by dwelling in the individual believers and enables them to live a righteous and faithful life. The Holy Spirit also acts as comforter or paraclete, one who intercedes, or supports or acts as an advocate, particularly in times of trial and he acts to convince the unredeemed person both of the sinfulness of their actions, and of their moral standing as sinners before God. Another faculty of the Holy Spirit is the inspiration and interpretation of Scripture. 
The Holy Spirit both inspires the writing of the scriptures and interprets them to the Christian and the Church. The Holy Spirit also empowers the believers to act on Jesus' behalf today here on earth operating in signs, wonders, and miracles like Jesus did and released his disciples to do in the Gospels, Luke chapter 10, Matthew chapter 10, and Mark 6. John chapter 14 verse 12 are the words of Jesus encouraging his disciples that they can do as he did. John chapters 14 to 17 you can read the words Jesus spoke regarding sending his spirit the Holy Spirit to live in those who believe in him empowering us to carry forth his commission given in Matthew chapter 28 verses 18 to 20. Topic: <laughs> Procession of the Holy Spirit. Topic: In John chapter 15 verse 26 Jesus says of the Holy Spirit but when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me." In 325, the First Council of Nicaea, being the first ecumenical council, ended its creed with the words, "...and in the Holy Spirit." In 381, the First Council of Constantinople, being the second ecumenical council, expanded the creed and stated that Holy Spirit "...proceeds from the Father." Ek tu Petros ek This phrase was based on John chapter 15 verse 26. Ho para tu Petros ek In 451, the Council of Chalcedon, being the fourth ecumenical council, affirmed the Nicene-Constantinopolitan Creed. In the same time, the question of procession of the Holy Spirit was addressed by various Christian theologians, expressing diverse views and using different terminology, thus initiating the debate that became focused on the Filioque Clause. In 589, the Third Council of Toledo in its third canon officially accepted the doctrine of the procession of the Holy Spirit from the Father and the Son. A patra et filio procedure. During the next few centuries, two distinctive schools of thought were gradually shaped, Eastern and Western. Eastern theologians were teaching that Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father only notion referred as monoprocessionism, while Western theologians were teaching that Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son notion referred as filiochism. Debates and controversies between two sides became the main point of difference within the Christian pneumatology. Topic. Fruit and gifts of the Spirit the fruit of the Holy Spirit consists of permanent dispositions. In this, similar to the permanent character of the sacraments, virtuous characteristics engendered in the Christian by the action of the Holy Spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 23 names nine aspects and states. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, self-control. Against such there is no law. In the Epistle to the Galatians these nine characteristics are in contrast to the works of the flesh and highlight the positive manifestations of the work of the Holy Spirit in believers. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are distinct from the fruit of the Spirit, and consist of specific abilities granted to the individual Christian. They are frequently known by the Greek word for gift, charisma, in English charism, from which the term charismatic derives. There is no generally agreed upon exhaustive list of the gifts, and various Christian denominations use different lists, often drawing upon 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Romans chapter 12 and Ephesians chapter 4. Pentecostal denominations and the charismatic movement teach that the absence of the supernatural gifts was due to the neglect of the Holy Spirit and his work by the major denominations. Believers in the relevance of the supernatural gifts sometimes speak of a baptism with the Holy Spirit or filling with the Holy Spirit which the Christian needs to experience in order to receive those gifts. However, many Christian denominations hold that the baptism with the Holy Spirit is identical with conversion, and that all Christians are by definition baptized in the Holy Spirit. The seven gifts of the Holy Spirit pour out on a believer at baptism, and are traditionally derived from Isaiah chapter 11 verses 1 to 2, although the New Testament does not refer to Isaiah chapter 11 verses 1 to 2 regarding these gifts. These seven gifts are, wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, strength, knowledge, piety and fear of the Lord. This is the view of the Catholic Church and many other mainstream Christian groups. Topic. Denominational variations. Topic. 
Christian denominations have doctrinal variations in their beliefs regarding the Holy Spirit. A well known example is the Filioque controversy regarding the Holy Spirit. One of the key differences between the teachings of the main Western churches and various Eastern Christian denominations Eastern Orthodox, Oriental Orthodox, Church of the East, the Filioque debate centers around whether the Nicene Creed should state that the Spirit proceeds from the Father and then have a stop, as the Creed was initially adopted in Greek and followed thereafter by the Eastern Church, or should say, from the Father and the Son as was later adopted in Latin and followed by the Western Church, Filioque being, and from the Son. In Latin, towards the end of the 20th century, discussions took place about the removal of Filioque in the Nicene Creed from Anglican prayer books along the lines of the Eastern Orthodox and Oriental Orthodox approach, but these still have not reached a state of final implementation. The majority of mainstream Protestantism holds similar views on the theology of the Holy Spirit as the Roman Catholic Church, but there are significant differences in belief between Pentecostalism and the rest of Protestantism. Pentecostalism has a focus on baptism with the Spirit, relying on Acts chapter 1 verse 5 which refers to, now you will baptize with the Holy Spirit. The more recent charismatic movements have a focus on the gifts of the Spirit, such as healing, prophecy, etc., and rely on 1 Corinthians chapter 12 as a scriptural basis, but often differ from Pentecostal movements. Non-Trinitarian views about the Holy Spirit differ significantly from mainstream Christian doctrine. Catholicism The Holy Spirit has been a topic in at least two papal encyclicals Divinum Illid Munus, Pope Leo XIII Dominum et Vivificantum, Pope John Paul II 1986. The topic of the Holy Spirit is discussed extensively in the Catechism of the Catholic Church as, I believe in the Holy Spirit. In paragraphs 683 through 747, the doctrine of the Holy Spirit as expressed in the Nicene Creed has been a point of difference between the Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox Church. See Filioque Clause. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Jehovah's Witnesses. Topic: <laughs> Jehovah. S. Witnesses view the Holy Spirit, not as an actual person separate from God the Father, but as God's eternal energy, or active force, that he uses to accomplish his will in creation and redemption. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints Members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints believe that the Holy Ghost is the third member of the Godhead. He is a personage of spirit, without a body of flesh and bones. He is often referred to as the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Lord, or the Comforter. Members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints believe in a social Trinitarianism and subordinationism, meaning that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are understood as being unified in will and purpose, but not in substance. The Holy Ghost is believed to be subordinate to the Father and the Son and operates under their direction. The Holy Ghost, like all intelligent beings, is believed to be fundamentally eternal, uncreated, and self-existent. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints teaches that the influence of the Holy Ghost can be received before baptism, but the gift, or constant companionship, of the Holy Ghost, which comes by the laying on of hands by a properly ordained priesthood holder with a line of authority traced back to Christ through Peter, is obtained only after baptism. Joseph Smith, the founding prophet of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, taught, You might as well baptize a bag of sand as a man. He said, if not done in view of the remission of sins and getting of the Holy Ghost. Baptism by water is but half a baptism, and is good for nothing without the other half that is, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Stoic philosophy in his introduction to the 1964 book Meditations, the Anglican priest Maxwell Staniforth discussed the profound impact of Stoicism on Christianity. In particular, another Stoic concept which offered inspiration to the Church was that of divine spirit. Kleentz, wishing to give more explicit meaning to Zeno's creative fire, had been the first to hit upon the term pneuma, or 
spirit to describe it like fire this intelligent spirit was imagined as a tenuous substance akin to a current of air or breath, but essentially possessing the quality of warmth, it was immanent in the universe as God, and in man as the soul and life-giving principle. Clearly it is not a long step from this to the Holy Spirit of Christian theology, the Lord and Giver of Life, visibly manifested as tongues of fire at Pentecost and ever since associated, in the Christian as in the Stoic mind, with the ideas of vital fire and beneficent warmth. <laughs> Symbolism and art Topic. Topic. Symbolism Topic. The Holy Spirit is frequently referred to by metaphor and symbol, both doctrinally and biblically. Theologically speaking these symbols are a key to understanding of the Holy Spirit and his actions, and are not mere artistic representations. Water, signifies the Holy Spirit's action in baptism, such that in the manner that, by one Spirit believers were all baptized, so they are, made to drink of one Spirit. 1 Cor 12 13 Thus the Spirit is also personally the living water welling up from Christ crucified JN 1934 1 JN 5-8 as its source and welling up in Christians to eternal life. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, item 1137, considers the water of life reference in the Book of Revelation 21-6 and 22-1, one of most beautiful symbols of the Holy Spirit. Anointing, the symbolism of bless with oil also signifies the Holy Spirit, to the point of becoming a synonym for the Holy Spirit. The coming of the Spirit is referred to as His anointing. 2 Cor 1 in some denominations anointing is practiced in confirmation chrismation, in the Eastern churches. Its full force can be grasped only in relation to the primary anointing accomplished by the Holy Spirit, that of Jesus. The title, Christ. In Hebrew, Messiah means the one anointed by God's Spirit. Fire, symbolizes the transforming energy of the Holy Spirit's actions. In the form of tongues, as of fire, the Holy Spirit rested on the disciples on the morning of Pentecost. Cloud and light, the Spirit comes upon the Virgin Mary and overshadows her, so that she might conceive and give birth to Jesus. On the mountain of transfiguration, the Spirit in the Cloud came and overshadowed Jesus, Moses and Elijah, Peter, James and John, and a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my Son, my Chosen, listen to him. LK 934-35 The dove, when Christ comes up from the water of his baptism, the Holy Spirit, in the form of a dove, comes down upon him and remains with him. Mount 316 Wind, the Spirit is likened to the wind that blows where it will. JN 3 to 8 and described as a sound from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind. Acts chapter 2 verse 24. Topic: Art and architecture. Topic: The Holy Spirit has been represented in Christian art both in the Eastern and Western churches using a variety of depictions. The depictions have ranged from nearly identical figures that represent the three persons of the Holy Trinity to a dove to a flame. The Holy Spirit is often depicted as a dove, based on the account of the Holy Spirit descending on Jesus like a dove when he was baptized in the Jordan. In many paintings of the Annunciation, the Holy Spirit is shown in the form of a dove, coming down towards Mary on beams of light, as the Archangel Gabriel announces Jesus Christ's coming to Mary. A dove may also be seen at the ear of St. Gregory the Great as recorded by his secretary or other church father authors, dictating their works to them. The dove also parallels the one that brought the olive branch to Noah after the deluge, as a symbol of peace. The Book of Acts describes the Holy Spirit descending on the apostles at Pentecost in the form of a wind and tongues of fire resting over the apostles' heads. Based on the imagery in that account, the Holy Spirit is sometimes symbolized by a flame of fire. Topic. Visual arts Topic. Topic. Holy Spirit cathedrals Topic. Topic. See also 
Topic: Cult of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit in Islam, Holy Spirit in Judaism, Intercession of the Spirit, Miracle, Seven Spirits of God. Topic: References. Topic. Topic. Sources. Topic. Martinez Diaz, Gonzalo, Rodriguez, Felix, 1992. Colección Canónica Hispana. 5. Madrid: Consejo Superior de Investigaciones Científicas. Mayendorf, John, 1989. Imperial Unity and Christian Divisions, The Church 450-680 AD. The Church in History. 2. Crestwood, N.Y., St. Vladimir's Seminary Press. Wilhite, David E. 2009. The Baptists. And the Son. The Filioque Clause in Noncredal Theology. Journal of Ecumenical Studies. 44 285-302. Two, Phillips, Andrew 1995. Orthodox Christianity and the English Tradition. Frithgarth, UK, Anglo-Saxon Books. Topic. Further reading Topic. Burgess, Stanley M. 1989. The Holy Spirit, Eastern Christian Traditions. Peabody, Mass., Hendrickson Publishers. Karkanen, Veli Mahdi 2002. Pneumatology, The Holy Spirit in Ecumenical, International, and Contextual Perspective. Grand Rapids, Michigan, Baker Academic. Karkanen, Veli Mahdi, ed. 2010. Holy Spirit and Salvation, The Sources of Christian Theology. Louisville, Kentucky, Westminster John Knox Press. Charles Williams, The Descent of the Dove, A Short History of the Holy Spirit in the Church 1950, Faber, London, Topic. External links Topic. Catechism of the Catholic Church, Chapter 3. I Believe in the Holy Spirit Knows. 683-686, Article 8. I Believe in the Holy Spirit. Knows. 687-747.